going to deep dive on the different elements of our um, Marx card to give you a better overview. And the best overview of, of or understanding the Marx card would be by creating a scatter plot. A scatter plot looks at the relationship between two measures. I see sales and profit. And the easiest way of creating a scatter plot from scratch is by double clicking on measure one and double clicking on measure two. So by double clicking on my profit and by double clicking on my sales, we'll see that um, we have created the most simple scatter plot there is. By hovering over this element or over this mark, as it's called, we now see our total sum of profit um, and our total sum of sales uh, related to each other. That's of course not super useful. I want to see the relationship between profit and sales for every single customer, for example. That's where our first mark is gonna come in handy, which is called the detail. So for every single customer, that means that I no longer want to look at the detail of all of my data, but I want to look at the detail per customer name. That's why I'm gonna take my customer name dimension and drop it onto details. At this point, if I look in the bottom left of my double desktop screen, you'll see we'll have 793 marks. In this case, that means, because every single mark is a customer, that we have 793 customers in our data. We can always easily switch our visualization. So you'll see we have profit on our columns and sales on the rows at this moment. That's where this next button, button could be useful. It's called swap rows and columns. By clicking on it, you'll see that my sales and profit just flips from columns to rows. It's a personal preference. I personally like this overview the most. To make it a bit more clear, I'm going to use my drop down once more and switch to entire view. Okay, that's a good start. Now we have to fix some things. We already know that every single dot is a customer name, but there's a, 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 not such a good overview in here of how many customers are there. Uh, uh, it's, it's too cluttered, let's say. So let's try to fix this in the best possible way. First of all, I don't like these empty circles. So let's change the look and feel of our visualization by using our dropdown in the marks card. Let's go for a circle. That's a bit better so we can highlight with colors even more clearly now. Uh, we are using some sales and some profits. Let's use our quantity to highlight the color. The more they bought, the 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 more green the color should be, the less they bought, the more red the color should be, for example. So by dragging quantity on color, Tableau uses a range by default that uses the blue color. You'll see the blue, uh, the blue, you'll see the color legend popping up on the right side. We know by now already that we can change it by clicking on our color mark, choosing edit colors, and choosing the color, color range we prefer. Let's go for an orange blue one this time instead of uh, red green. You can, of course, choose the color of your own liking. Something like this. Let's give it some more power by also adding quantity on the size. We manually, we can manually change our size, but then it will increase or, or make every single dot bigger or smaller. I want the size to be determined by a value as well. So I'm going to take my quantity on the left side and drag it to the size. If I now play with the size, you'll see that it more um, exponentially grows depending on what the value of your quantity is. This could be a small tip. If you click on size, there's no button there that says edit size, just like the other color. This has been hidden for some re reason by Tableau. You can either get there by double clicking on your size legend on the right side, size legend, or by using the little drop down icon and select edit sizes. It's the only way to get to this box and then you can choose how your size varies 
in case you want to set a start value or manually set the range a bit, as you can see it changing right now on the left side. There's not much more we can do to play with our size. Okay, what's next? We've seen color, we've seen detail, we've seen size. Label we've seen before as well, but let's click on this once more and select show mark labels. Okay, for some reason, Tableau only shows the mark labels on the marks he thinks or he feels there's enough space for them to show. Okay, um, that's not really what I was looking for. So let's click on label once more. And if you see in this option box, all the way in the bottom, you also have the possibility that's called allow labels to overlap other marks. Oof, this is not really what we are looking for. It's, it's, you don't see your data points anymore. So that's not ideal. Click on your label mark once more and deselect allow labels to overlap other marks. We have some more options. We can go for selected, can go for highlighted, but nothing really happens. So let's see what these two mean. Select means if I close this box and I select these marks, for example, only for these selected marks, the label pops up. That's what selected means. It's selecting just like you were doing, for example, Excel, by using your left mouse button and dragging to select multiple elements. Okay. My connection to my Zoom meeting just was re can, ever, can someone raise their hand if they can still see my screen? Okay, and still hear me, perfect, okay. I just had a minor connection issue. So from the moment there's something wrong or, or you don't hear me that clearly, clearly anymore, you can always raise your hand. That would help me out a lot. Okay, um, what was I talking about? So yeah, we were looking at the labels of our different marks. This is what a selected label would mean. But what is a highlight label? Highlighted, hmm. if I select it, it also shows. But what's the difference between highlight and selection? Well, if you take a look at your customer name dimension here that we've put on our marks card, we can always right click it. And here you'll see what's called the option show highlighter. You can select that one, show highlighter. By right clicking the customer name in our visualization, so in our marks card and select show highlighter. If I now select Tamara is one of the, yep, Tamara. By first typing Tamara, you'll see it highlights all the Tamara values. And by selecting one person, it highlights Tamara chant only. That's what a highlighter is. Okay, so those are our labels. Then the final one we're gonna take a look at is called the tooltip. The tooltip is the, the element you'll see hovering um, or appearing from the moment you hover over one of your data elements. We see profit, quantity, sales, and so on. Why is the tooltip useful? Well, let's say we want to show 10 measures or, or 15 measures. We cannot create a scatter plot that contains 15 measures. That's why the um, tooltip could be very useful to add additional information. For example, our discount here on the left side measures. We haven't used the discount value anywhere. That's why it could be useful to add the discount to your tooltip and if you now hover, you'll see that discount also pops up in there. That's how the tooltip could be used quite effectively. But there's more. We have seen in our previous sheets, there is an order date and sales line chart that we created. I call it sales through time. If I go back to my scatter plot, I see here Tamara Chant. Okay, she has lots of sales and lots of profit. Is she really a good customer or was it a one-time big buy? I prefer customers that buy regularly and often in my store, for example. Those are the customers I'd like to keep. One-time big buyers could have been a coincidence, let's say. Let's find out if Tamara, if Tamara Chant was a good or is a good customer. If you have this second sheet available, that's called sales through time, uh, it's, it's definitely going to work out. So go back to sheet four, click on your tooltip, and you'll see the tooltip has been created up until, up until this point automatically. 
by just dragging elements on top of the tooltip or displaying existing elements we have used before. I'm gonna put my cursor behind some sales and enter twice, so there's some, some white space between the existing values and what's next. To give you an indication, start here. I'm gonna add something here where I just typed start here. And on the right side, on the top right side, within this edit tooltip box, you'll see a button called insert. We can insert a number of things, for example, also the date that we did this, our name, um, the data source name, the sheet name, whatever, elements from Tableau itself. But all the way at the top, you'll see sheets as well. That means we can include different visualizations in the tooltip of a visualization. That's interesting. So I'm going to select, in my case, it's called sales through time. Choose your sales through time one and click on OK. I'm briefly going to repeat what I've done. Click on tooltip. Put your cursor somewhere. And someone raised his hand. In case you're raising your hand, you can immediately actually type something in the Q&A or the chat so I can try to answer it while I'm explaining the rest. Um, so I'll remove what I've done. Where do the options in insert come from? Um, these are default defined options by Tableau themselves. But if you think about these options, these options are only the ones of the dimensions and measures I've been using in my sheet. So you'll see customer name, discount, profit, quantity, and sales. These are all available in here in my current visualization. The available sheets are, of course, only the sheets that I've created myself before. If I haven't created any sheets before this scatter plot, I couldn't have included any visualization in my tooltip. I hope that clears things up a bit. So if I start from scratch, insert, it's already here in the bottom. Okay, so my initial situation is the simple tooltip we've seen before. Click on tooltip, have some space below your values, go to insert, go to sheet, and select sales through time. From the moment we've done that, click on OK, and I'll hover over Tamara once again. And as you can see, my existing line chart basically gets filtered by using the name or the customer name Tamara Chant. And as just like we thought, Tamara is a one-time big buyer, it seems. So we can now see what's going on by hovering over our different um, marks or customer names to see how their evolution in buying elements within our store looks like. Of course, we can input any or we can use any visualization we want within our tooltip. Watch out. If you want to add simple um, text tables in there, you cannot click or scroll in your tooltip. So make sure it does not show too much data because otherwise it will no longer be clear. Simple visualizations like line charts often